a geologist discovered an exciting object that had fallen from a nearby cliff while winding through a trail in the Grand Canyon's Red Cliffs. The massive object was torn from an ancient rock formation that contained an astonishing secret, which dates back to millions of years ago. After noticing the item, the geologist snapped a photograph of what he found. The impact of this one photograph is extraordinary, as it has gone on to kickstart a chain of events that undoubtedly changed the knowledge we have about Arizona in prehistoric times. This was what was discovered. This all started when the cliff face along the Grand Canyon's Bright Angel Trail collapsed, which caused a boulder to tumble down to the path located below. Many tourists and hikers have entirely disregarded this place of rocks even though it was hiding something special. It was until the person with the right knowledge came across the rock to see the value of this boulder. This person was Alan Krill, who was a geologist. He began to suspect that he had stumbled upon a remarkable find. The stone contained something genuinely remarkable that was around even before the dinosaurs ever walked the earth. Four years after stumbling on this piece of rock, Alan's good friend Stephen Rowland published a paper that detailed the truth of this stone and the Grand Canyon. After releasing this information to the public, Alan's discovery quickly became acknowledged as one of a kind ancient specimen that can be used to shed light on a distant past. However, the truth is that this discovery would still be hidden if the rocks hadn't crumbled. The Grand Canyon has been a place where many different stories have centered and while Ellen's discovery does add to its appeal, these stories have been circulating long before the stone was found. The history of this place is almost 2 billion years old. When the Grand Canyon was forming, soaring temperatures and comprehensive forces caused the igneous and metamorphic rocks to form. After this, sedimentary layers were created. However, the ravine only took shape around 65 million years ago. The tectonic plates beneath the region caused the Colorado Plateau to shape into what it is now. This high and flat area is elevated to around 10,000 feet above sea level and is now known as the vast expanse that stretches across Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah borders. The Colorado River flowed across the plateau for millions of years. This river carried debris that wore away at the rock located below the flowing river, which gradually caused a downward path through the igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary layers. As time passed, the Colorado River continued to slice through the canyon's plateau, which left a growing canyon. After this, a series of ice ages occurred and the river grew more robust as the climate became wetter and caused the deeper grooves in the ancient rock. What's known today as the Grand Canyon is essentially the ravine that the Colorado River carved. For this reason, the Grand Canyon is known as one of the seven natural wonders of the world. However, Allen's discovery only added to the Grand Canyon's remarkable nature. The Grand Canyon structure is forever changing as the Colorado River continues to erode the Grand Canyon's plateau. This means that the natural wonder might be even broader and more profound in the future than it is. However, it is unclear how this is going to affect the entire canyon. As we have mentioned, there is much geological activity in the Grand Canyon. It might be surprising to hear that humans have been calling this place home for a long time. Humans first arrived in this part of Arizona at the same time as the last Ice Age. President Benjamin Harris first designated the Grand Canyon as a forest reserve, which was the initial step taken to preserving this incredibly unique landmark. In addition to this, the Grand Canyon was also named as an official national park in 1919. Fast forwarding to the present day, the Grand Canyon now welcomes millions of tourists each year. However, it isn't just tourists that make their way to this spectacular monument. The Grand Canyon also holds the attention of many scientists, including Alan Krill. The rocks forming in the Grand Canyon are also some of the best and infamous parts of the Grand Canyon and take center stage when it comes to tourist snapshots. The northern rim is known as the Isis Temple Towers, which is 7,000 feet above sea level. Although the Grand Canyon always has a constant visitor flow, it still manages to hold on to centuries and centuries of secrets. There have been many studies conducted at the Grand Canyon, one of these studies completely contradict the formation of the ravine. Carl Karlstorm is a geologist who wrote a paper explaining his beliefs that the famous landmark was actually a lot younger than its initial age of 70 million years. He stated that the different segments forming the canyon all have different ages and histories. All of Carl's discoveries were met with much controversy, and not many people believe this new theory of the Grand Canyon's formation. However, the time to figure out the landmark's decision is quickly running out because the Colorado River is continuously tearing away at the canyon's walls and taking evidence with it. 
It's not all bad news, as other secrets are being revealed at the same time as the rocks making up the Grand Canyon are eroding. One of these secrets is the rock discovered by Allen. Many of these finds include ancient fossils. The National Park Services announced in May 2019 that a set of fossilized footprints had been found in one of the canyon's far-flung regions. These footprints are believed to have belonged to a four-footed creature that lived in the area over 280 million years ago. Once paleontologists finished studying these tracks, they quickly realized that these fossils were a type of marking, which is commonly known as Echlinotherium. This was an incredible discovery, as such creatures had never been found in a desert-like environment before. These fossilized footprints that had been discovered in the Grand Canyon provided important information pertaining to the paleobiology of the diectomorphs. This is because diectomorphs wasn't expected to live in desert conditions, as they didn't have the correct adaptations to be entirely independent of water. In the same year of this discovery, the NPS announced that it will be conducting its biggest database containing paleontological data ever before. This resource is a comprehensive catalog that's intended to help the public and experts believe a better understanding of the area. New fossil tracking being found in the Grand Canyon are providing important information pertaining to the conditions and formations of the rock making up the Grand Canyon. The one fossilized stone is especially offering this as it contradicts many beliefs surrounding the Grand Canyon's environment. It's no secret that amateurs and academics have spent decades combing through the Grand Canyon in hopes of finding fossils. However, some surprises are just as intriguing. This takes us back to what Alan would while on one of the hiking trails. The trail where Alan found this rock was on Bright Angel Trail, which is pretty impressive alone. It starts in the ravine's southern border at Grand Canyon Village and makes up around 8 miles of trail. The trail is known to pass through several well-known rock formations. As Alan was hiking, he spotted a boulder that was resting nearby the trail. However, they noticed something incredible after taking a look at the series of strange patterns on the rock. The source of this boulder became very evident to Alan. The boulder has come from an exposed part of one of the Grand Canyon's cliffs, commonly known as a Manacacha Formation. This is made from limestone and mudstone and runs throughout the Grand Canyon. It also forms a part of the Colorado Plateau. It's no secret that Alan was intrigued by what he spotted, as would any other geologist that came across the boulder. He sent a photograph of what he found to Roland, who was a paleontologist at the University of Nevada. After looking at the image, Roland was able to confirm Alan's suspicions. Year down the line, the incredible find was finally announced at the Society of the Vertebrae Paleontology's yearly meeting. However, the story isn't over yet. It took a few more years for the authentic details of what Alan had discovered to be revealed. Roland and his colleagues later published in his scientific journal, Plus One, this paper was detailed the Grand Canyon's fossilized trackways, like the one found on the Bright Angel Trail. Due to these discoveries, the scientists were able to pinpoint the age of the tracks with incredible accuracy. This showed that the tracks dated back to more than 313 million years ago in the Carboniferous period which made the track record breakers. What Allen had discovered on the Bright Angel Trail is thought to be the oldest fossilized vertebrae footprints ever to be found in the Grand Canyon. However, that's not all. Experts are unsure of the type of organisms these fossils belong to. Although the organisms are unknown, experts do believe that it comes from a type of reptile. This makes the discovery incredibly special, and this fossil is one of the oldest tracks on Earth that hold shelled egg-layering creatures that could walk in sand dunes. According to reports, these tracks are set to be formed back when the land known as Arizona was close to equator. After this, two prehistoric creatures walked diagonally through the ground that is now known as the Manicacha Formation. With all that's being said, many people believe that two different creatures are responsible for these historic tracks that have been fossilized. Many people think that it could have been the same vertebrae crossing at different times, but what's the truth? However, from the research conducted, it's evident that the two sets of prints reflect two different travel speeds, which is incredibly telling. It also seems that one of the creatures walked using a lateral sequence motion, which is also essential to know. These footprints have managed to remain in excellent condition. This is because these were likely preserved with the use of sand and water. Thus, as time went on, the impression remained within the shape of the rock, which helps us understand the Grand Canyon better. The significance of the Grand Canyon is often overlooked by those who visit the national park. Although its beauty is heavily admired, the processes that have caused such beauty are generally overlooked. This beauty merely scratches the surface of what is actually great about the area.